Today in the lab we wish to study this ring of six wire coils or electromagnets which were drawn in crops on August 8th, 2014, not far from Avery on Green Street. And you can see how the current weaves back and forth. A similar crop picture was in Italy. AC current going back and forth. And here you can see the crop picture in the wire coils, how it goes back and forth. Now just at the very center of this crop picture we could see this feature here which I took a photo of of something rising up from the center with a little ring around it that looks just like a UFO rising up. So in summary we're going to study this crop picture today it has something rising up in the middle like a UFO and we're going to put some make the device put some power on and see if anything rises up. Here now are a ring of six wire coils a thousand turns of 0.5 millimeter wire each, PI coated. They're wired up in series around the outside because a parallel short wiring shorts the power supply out. We have a switch to control the power here, a simple switch. We'll start out going DC through a 35 amp rectifier. We'll come for a voltage controller out of a 120 volt isolation transformer for safety. So we got 120 volts coming in. We can rectify it to DC. We can switch it on and off. It'll go into these six coils, and we're going to see if we place magnets or anything else in the center, if they'll move or rise up. First interesting thing, if we just put a 100 millimeter ring magnet into the center of the device, we have DC power, and we switch on 120 volts to rectify DC, it pops right out and rises up. Here we go, pops out and rises up. So already on the very first experiment, we have something to see for this. Now how does this work? The ring magnet is attracted to a south pole, it's a south field on the left. We turn on the power, each of these coils also has an attractive south pole. So these have the same polarity, the wire coils and the magnet in this DC orientation. And there's a reverse field in the center, a north field, which pushes away this magnet and makes it rise up. Reverse field electromagnetic levitation. Just to confirm this is correct, we keep the power the same, so we have a south field coming out of here, but we put a north field here. And if there's a north field at the center now, when we turn on the power, it should attract. So does it attract? Yes, it attracts. So we know there's a north field at the center here, a south field here due to the electromagnet, and that's what's controlling the lifter, otherwise sideways motions of this 100 millimeter ring magnet. We use a smaller magnet with north on the left again and flip the power on. It'll again attract straight in. As expected. If we take this smaller 60 millimeter magnet with the south pole out and turn the power on, now it'll go away from the reverse field as expected, just like for the big ring magnet. If we repeat this, it's the same experiment with a ring magnet coming through a switch and a 35 amp rectifier, this time coming out of a 260 volt variac. Look, it's a 260 volts rather than 120. Let's see what happens. Now it shoots out really quite strongly, again at 260 volts, and we add some power to make it attract. Now it attracts really quite strongly. Here we have six wire coils wired in series again, 100 millimeter ring magnet above them. We're going to put 240 or 60 volts from this very act through a rectifier and a switch and put it into them. And it'll be two, -third, two thirds DC and one third AC and watch what happens. The 100 millimeter ring magnet jumps up and then oscillates due to the AC power. It's very interesting. If we flip the polarity of the magnet and also of the input DC rectified power pulse, which has an AC component, it'll jump up and waggle in the other direction. So this is very consistent. With everything we know. This is just the flip polarity on the magnet and the DC. If we use 240 or 60 volts of AC power wide in series without the rectifier, just pure AC, the ring magnet will wobble strongly. However, it never gets a DC pulse to get it up out of the field strongly enough to rise up in the air. So DC mixed with AC about 2 to 1 seems to be the right ratio. We can also use a wire coil instead of a permanent magnet. We turn on the deep power with a DC rectified going one way and DC going the other coil, the electromagnet coil, it'll shoot out quite nicely just like a permanent magnet.
what we're going to do next is have a single coil of 0.5 millimeter wire, 240 volts AC we can pulse into it. We're going to test lens law repulsion for different permanent magnets of different size. Here's 60 millimeter with the N pole facing the wire core. Now we'll turn the power on and see what happens. Moved a long way off. Let's try again. Long way off. Big lens law repulsion. Let's flip it over and see what happens. Now we have lens law repulsion of a 60 millimeter neo magnet with the S pole facing the coil. Again it moves a long way. Not much difference. This is a 60 millimeter piece of 1 millimeter copper, 120 volts again. Just barely moves compared to the magnet. The magnet 60 millimeters flew out of there. With the magnet completely vertical, it jumps up and then often settles down again. Tell what's happening if we use a rectifier. If the first pulse of the AC field and the DC going flipping back and forth from north-south to south-north takes it far enough out of the field, it will stay there. It's the first pulse and it stays there. First it jumps out and then it hovers. 120 volts through a rectifier. AC. First it jumps up due to a quick DC pulse. And then it hovers there by Lenz's law because there's still an AC component coming out of the rectifier. jump and hover DC and then AC current off 160 volts or 40 coming out of an AC power supply with a rectifier first it jumps way up and then it hovers by lens law repulsion and then drops while to turn the current off the same magnet moved along a horizontal rod with 120 volts AC and no rectifier the first DC pulse just sort of moved it along before that never came back to rattle and it never fell back down to the lens law hover point. First DC pulse just pushes it out there. And that's how the whole thing works.